Hi, my name is Grayson Carraway. I am a first year pharmacy student at UAMS College of Pharmacy in Little Rock. I'm here today to present to you a little bit about medication safety. So we'll start out with the basics. What are prescription drugs? A prescription drug is going to require a prescription that has written by your doctor or provider and it can be dispensed only at pharmacies under the direct supervision of a pharmacist. <clears throat> so what do prescription drugs look like? There are more than just capsules and pills. That's probably the most generic thing people think about when they think about a prescription drug, but it could be anything from like injections, like insulin or inhalers or ointments, liquids, patches. There's lots of options. If any of y'all have asthma, then you would be um, familiar with using an inhaler. Any of your parents might have high cholesterol or high blood pressure. They're taking prescription medications to help manage those. So what is the prescription? It can be handwritten. So if you go to the doctor, you're not feeling well, you got the flu, flu season's coming up. So y'all be sure and get your flu shots. Um, but if you do happen to come down with the flu, you could go and see your doctor and they would, you know, check on you and see what's going on. And then they would write your prescription. And so that prescription is going to contain um, patient name. So we're going to put your name up here, the date of birth, and have the strength of the medication. You're going to have the frequency and amount you're going to take. So how many tablets you take, how many times a day. Um, how many pills or how much, how much substance of whatever medication you're being prescribed, how much is going to be dispensed. Um, the route is going to be on there. So if you're injecting it, inserting, um, by mouth, um, anything like that, that's going to be on there. Uh, you're going to have the number of refills. So if your doctor thinks it's, you know, good for you, you need a refill, like it's working out, then you'll have a refill on some of your maintenance med. Like if your parents are taking cholesterol medicine, that's something they're gonna take every single month. Um, for the flu, you're just gonna take it one time. So while you had the flu, before you get the flu, whatever the situation might be, you're not gonna have refills on that medication. Um, the doctors, they're gonna sign it and date it. Uh, this could also be called in over the phone. So if your doctor doesn't give you a physical hard copy script, then your doctor can call it in to the pharmacy. So the pharmacist would take that prescription over the phone from your doctor and write it down themselves. And then that's your prescription. Or it can be sent as a e-script, what we call them. It would be sent over electronically through a system it's secure and it would look similar to this, um, how a hard copy would look. And you would have all the information on there that is present on a hard copy. Prescription drugs are a critical part of treating health conditions and infections, but they're only safe when they're taken by the person it was prescribed to and when it's taken in the correct dose and at the correct time. Here's a picture of some over-the-counter medications. Um, these are drugs you can buy without a prescription at most drug stores and grocery stores. Um, a couple that you might recognize would be like Tylenol, um, ibuprofen, Benadryl. If you play sports, if you're anything like me, you had ibuprofen in your bag because you were in pain a lot. <laughs> Um, Over-the-counter medications, even though you don't have to have a prescription for these things, they're still not safe if you don't take them correctly. You need to read the directions and figure out how you need to take them, what's the best way for you, how much, depending on your age. Um, <clears throat> and if you don't, if you have questions, then you just need to ask the pharmacist. I mean, they're always there. If you need to call or, or go in and see them, then if you have questions on how to take it or if it might interfere with something you're already on, like don't be afraid to ask them. That's what they're there for. They're there to help you and make sure that you stay safe. Um, prescriptions are not a one size fits all kind of thing. Um, when a doctor is examining you and trying to figure out what's going on, like they're taking all of your information 
into consideration. They're not thinking about your husband or your mom or your dad or anybody else. They're just thinking about you and looking at your medical history. So they're gonna take into consideration your age, your weight, your gender, um, other conditions that might be going on, past conditions, other medications to try to avoid drug interactions. So all this stuff is important and your doctor takes all that stuff into account when they're prescribing the medication for you specifically. Um, here's a, a graph that just shows top drugs among eighth and 12th graders past year use. So if you look over here, it is the um, column for eighth graders, column over here for 12th graders. Um, the blue is illicit drugs and the green is pharmaceutical drugs. So these are ones you're gonna have a prescription for. Illicit, those are illegal, stay away from those. Um, so you just got some common ones, Adderall, um, you got cough medicine. Um, those are just things that are commonly taken among high school kids and even kids outside of high school. Prescription drug abuse. Um, so what justification do people give for their use? Uh, would it be A, it's a prescription drug, so it's not dangerous because it's prescription. B, it's a prescription drug, so it's not addictive. C, it is illegal. D, it's legal, I'm sorry. D, all of the above. And the correct answer would be all of the above. These are all reasons that people give, but none of them are true. Taking a prescription drug that has not been prescribed to you or letting someone else take your prescription drug is illegal. So here's another graph talking about um, number of deaths in 2018 due to drug overdoses. So right here we have a total overdose deaths, 4,633. And then we have female, we break it up into gender, female 1,481 male 3,152. Well, 899 of these deaths were related to prescription drug abuse. So among young adults, for every death due to prescription drug overdose, there were 17 treatin treatment admissions and 66 emergency room visits. So you can tell there's way more people waiting till last minute to get help, or they're literally on their last leg, you know, going into the emergency room needing help due to a drug overdose. Instead of just facing their problem, confronting it, wanting to get help and change, like the treatment admissions, they're waiting, 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 putting it off until it's literally about to kill them. The, and dying wouldn't be the only consequence. I mean, obviously dying is probably, you know, a huge consequence for prescription drug overdose but also legal troubles, you know, if you could go to jail, that starts a criminal record for you. School trouble, you could have poor grades, suspension, you could start family troubles and your family might have trust issues and you might cause arguments and extra stress upon yourself and your family, um, health problems, and most of all addiction. Um, addiction is a disease caused by a combination of genetic predisposition and environmental factors characterized by a loss of control, continued drug use despite harm and cravings. Due to genetic inherited properties in our bodies, every person will react differently to different amounts of an addictive substance. For some, a single use is enough to get them hooked and stopping is near impossible. Having an addiction is not a choice, but exposing yourself to the substance is a choice. So if you never expose yourself, then you may never have that addiction. Just don't set yourself up for failure. True or false, everyone else is doing it and they don't have any issues. False. In the past year, only 15% of teens have misused prescription drugs. This means that six out of seven teens have not abuse prescription drugs. So you need to be in the majority. I mean, like we just talked about, those drugs, the prescription drugs that your doctor prescribes are literally for you. They take all of your medical history, everything about you into account to formulate that prescription just for you. 
This problem is getting worse, unfortunately. Here's a graph. Synthetic opioid death rate has increased from 2013 to 2018 dramatically. Deaths per 100,000 population. We're starting at one per 100,000 here in 2013. 1.8 in 2014, 3.1 in 2015, a big jump. It doubled here, 6.2 in 2016, all the way up to 9 in 2017 and 9.9 9 in 2018. That's 10 times more people dying from synthetic opo opioid um, related issues from 2013 to 2018. So what can you do to help? If you take prescription medication, never let anyone else use it. Even if they're in pain, they're your best friend, you trust them, they say they need it, don't do it. It could be, you could hurt them more than you could help them. Think of other things you shouldn't share, like your toothbrush and undergarments. Prescription drugs are just like these. They're personalized for you. Don't publicly announce what medications you take and where you keep them. There could be some people listening that don't have your best interest in mind and they could go and be selfish and take them for themselves and then they might hurt themselves by taking those medications and then you're going to be left without your medication that you need. So always store them in a safe place and then educate other people on what you know. So here's some things that you can look for in people you suspect um, drug abuse in, bloodshot or glazed eyes, dilated pupils, Abrupt changes in weight, aggression, lethargy, depression, changes in social networks, decline in school performance, skipping class, stealing, chronic coughing, all these things you can kind of recognize, especially if you know the person well. You can notice, you know, they're changing a little bit and things you can look for and kind of keep an eye out for them. So what do you do if you notice this in one of your friends? I don't, try talking to them, point out your concern, tell them you're wanting to talk to them just because you care about them. If the issue is serious, then you know, you can seek help. You can get help outside of what you know. You can ask your teacher for help, your counselor, a parent, or a nurse. Um, any, any of those people are available to help you and help you get resources that can help that person. Be positive. Don't be um, a custodian or judgmental. Let your friend know that you're worried about them and you wanna help them. And if you ever see or suspect an overdose, best thing to do is call 911. So here are some helpful resources. Alcohol and drug abuse hotline. This is the number for them, you know, 24 seven hotline. National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. This is a good one to have on hand. Um, treatment referral helpline, referrals to treatment facilities, support groups, other local organizations that can provide help for specific needs. Here's on um, local treatment centers, you can go here and find that. And if you're interested in some other educational resources, then you need to visit generationrx.org. Thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. I hope that y'all learned a lot and you're not going to ever have an addiction and you're going to be on the lookout for other people that might need help and you're going to have the correct um, resources to be able to help that person. Um, your teacher's going to give you a short survey, so be sure and fill that out. And once again, thank y'all for being with me today and I hope y'all have a good rest of the day.